Okay everybody, thanks for watching and here is my NT700 which has been misbehaving herself recently. Uh, when you're driving along at relatively low speeds she's developing a bucking bronco type effect. The power is just coming off, uh, sorry the power is dropping out and then surging on in about a one or two second cycle. Um, I've investigated this and it's suggested that it's the throttle position sensor so, and I've already eliminated the well-known problem with spark plug caps. I've replaced the spark plug caps and the leads so I'm fairly sure it's going to be something to do with this uh, wiring harness and the sensors. So let's get her into the garage and start investigating. Right, so here's the NT set up to investigate the throttle position sensor to see if that's functioning correctly. Uh, as I said earlier, I've been getting a lot of this bucking bronco with the power on, power off. I've done lots of investigation and lots of research, uh, courtesy of the owners groups uh, online. And one of the things they suggest to check is the correct action of the throttle position sensor. So I've got it set up ready to do that. I've removed the side panel uh, so I can get to the uh, ECU which I've just unclipped and laid down. You don't need to remove these uh, security bolts. Um, the signal from the uh, throttle position sensor comes in on to the EU ECU from uh, the throttle position sensor and it's pin uh, number 31 according to the manual which is a red and yellow wire and I don't know if we see it here it's the third one along from the right on the grey clip to get into it I've inserted a pin which you can possibly just see uh, as a pickup right I've got my meter set up it's an auto ranging meter um, so uh, if you haven't got one you just need it set to about a uh, 10 or 20 volt range because the maximum signal we're going to expect is 5 volts connected to the ground and I shall now just clip on the uh, uh, pr the positive probe. Bear with me a moment and into there that pick it up. Oh, stay put. Yep, okay. So now we have ignition on set to run and of course the throttle is going to be fully closed and we are getting a reading of 0.59 volts. Now, as I roll off the throttle, a bit of a stretch with the camera, as I roll the throttle, we should see the voltage, signal voltage, increasing right round to 4.49. Now that, I gather, is uh, within the specs, so that would appear to be functioning correctly. Um, you can also observe to check there's no dead spot that the, that the meter doesn't drop suddenly to zero along the range of the uh, throttle action. That seems to be smooth. So the next uh, investigations will be uh, for the 10 pin connector which connects the ECU to the various sensors including the map sensor and the uh, throttle position sensor amongst others. That lurks under the tank so it's going to be time to raise the tank and investigate that. I'll th now I'll pause at that point. Of course I was not expecting to have any anomalous readings uh, from the throttle position sensor because the very fault I'm trying to track down is an intermittent fault and of course 99% of the time it's going to behave itself. Um, okay. Uh, oh, sorry about the uh, bit of lens flare in the previous section. Uh, Clean the dust off the lens now. But one thing I have found in passing was this uh, bracket around the ECU, which, as you can see, is no longer there. Um, turns out this is a security bracket and proper and is only uh, applied in certain markets. So you might not actually have this bracket in the US. But for anybody watching in the UK, I've found one or two people, so they had a few issues taking it off. Um, and what I found is that the bolts on the front are actually welded in situ. Around the back, um, the, these holes had a 
a security Allen type key in, but uh, I, none of the bits I had would remove it. Um, so I decided to have a look at a go at drilling it out because it turns out it's made out of rather soft um, uh, iron or ma uh, ferrous material. So of course. Uh, drilling around uh, sensitive electrical equipment is a bit of a no-no anyway. So to minimise any possible contamination, I stuck some uh, gaffer tape around uh, backwards so that it would catch any uh, stray swarf as much as possible. And I also used, a, oh, I haven't got it to hand now, I used a, mag uh, a magnet to pick up any flying swarf. Um, and it popped off fairly easily and it took a five or ten minutes drilling each side. Uh, it looks like it's been designed to be drilled out. Um, I don't think I'll bother putting it back on because of course now it's no longer a security device. I could bolt it back in situ but it doesn't really seem to serve much purpose apart from being security. So there you go. I shall uh, discard this and now I'm able to get at the um, connections I'm interested in. The one uh, that carries the TPMS, sorry, the throttle position sensor wire is this uh, grey one here. Uh, and there's a couple of, uh, there's an earth and a feed wire in the, in the black one. So I can now go on and do what I wanted to do, which is clean all the contacts from, from sensor to ECU all the way through. Uh, um, because in my, my experience, nine times out of ten, the problems are not a failed sensor or failed, uh, device, it's the interconnections almost every time. So, I'll carry on. <laughs> However, I think before I do actually disconnect those uh, connectors to the ECU, I think I'm going to disconnect the battery, uh, leave it uh, disconnect for 24 hours just in case it upsets any of the electronics inside. Okay, so the ECU has now been off the battery for 24 hours or so, and I was able to unplug it, uh, ready to clean the contacts, these two contacts. The, oops, get the light a bit better. Okay, why is all the uh, toweling around? Because what I was doing, I flooded the contacts the pinholes with contact cleaner, left it for a few moments and then blasted blasted the residue out with um, an air duster or actually I used an airline which I had to hand, oops excuse me, I just, there we go, so oh, just a quick, uh, give it a good old blast because what I thought is most people seem to show you spray the contact cleaner on and let it dry out, well that would, to my mind, just leaves any crud that has been disrupted, it just dries back on again. So I gave it a good blast out, but I wasn't 100% sure the contact cleaner was safe on paintwork, hence I covered everything up just to be uh, just to be on the safe side. So the ECU came out quite well, the clips are f oh, offline, just uh, remove the tabs, slide them out, no real problem, they're quite tight fitting, I needed a little bit of a screwdriver just to ease them off, but basically no problem. So the ECU is now off and let's go over to it, which is on the worktop over here. Um, right, so I thought long and hard about what to do about cleaning these, these contacts up, because they're very delicate pins. Um, so, what the solution I came up with, I think it's losing focus a bit here, I've just got some carburetor cleaning brushes. And so what I did, I got the fine one and just run it very gently around the pins uh, to clean off any debris. Again, after flooding it with the uh, uh, car, sorry, flooding it with contact cleaner and then blasting it out two or three times. So the pins look pretty good now, no real problem. Next thing, to um, lubricate or not to lubricate them, or to uh, corrosion inhibit them. I did a lot of research on this and the mix, uh, the jury seems to be out. The one thing most people agreed on was, uh, which would be my first go-to, was WD-40. Do not use WD-40, they say, because it um, can attack the plastics over time and these are plastic. Um, I've got some um, 
what do you call it, uh, switch lubricating grease, uh, dielectric grease, but it's a bit gluppy and uh, difficult to apply to these pins. So, I, and I, I wanted to put not very much on at all. So, I finally honed in on something I had to hand, which is AC50. If you read the blurb on it, it's recommended for micro switches and um, people have suggested using it online as well. So I decided to go with the very lightest of light amounts I could do use. So I I got a tiny tiny amount onto a brush, put it on a brush and gently uh, and sorry put it on a brush as little as I could get, strained it out so the brush was basically just a tiny bit of damp and then just ran this around the contacts gently and I thought if I can see it I've put too much so it was a tiny tiny amount um, and we're now ready to be plugged back in again and see if we have still got a, a functional ECU right okay right so the ECU is now back on the bike in situ uh, I've powered the bike up and it went through the self checks fine so I think we're okay although I haven't actually started it up yet one thing I did find was some more information about this security bracket um, which I was a, a little dismissive of apparently it's there so that um, the bike the Honda can have Thatcham category 2 uh, status for its security so I shall probably refit that because there might be some insurance implications okay uh, as you'll see now I've taken the tank and the air box off which was reasonably straightforward because the tank has quick release connectors uh, because I am going to go on and do the valve clearances which I'm not looking forward to and possibly a coolant change as I've got this far um, one advantage now with the tank off is that I can get much better access to the multi-pin connector which is implicated in these um, throttle position sensor and map errors so I can now unplug that and give it a good clean. It is possible to uh, access it and unplug it without the tank off but it's pretty tricky and I don't know if you can see there's a clip at the side which clips it onto the frame you can probably do some sort of cleaning but not particularly thorough so now you can lift the whole thing oh, excuse me right out oh it's clipped back into the front uh, and get at it much better um, taking the throttle bodies uh, by uh, implication also removes the throttle position sensor which I'll go around to the other side of the bike because it is um, there let's get a good light on it it's the, it's the black uh, circular body with the blue uh, connector, but when I take the throttle bodies off, that will come off with the throttle position sensor uh, in situ. Once again, I was able to remove the blue connector by uh, using a screwdriver to unclip it from above. Uh, sorry, using a screwdriver to unclip the blue clip or prize the tang uh, and also wiggle my hand in through the air through the air vent which I don't even just about see my fingers there you can do it but it's um, it's not very not much access so oh, getting in my own light uh, getting the throat body off will give me a, the ability to clean it up fully right okay so how are we getting on now well not too bad actually uh, the throttle body was surprisingly easy to get out actually once I'd been able to undo this uh, bolt here, this clamp of which I will modify when I replace it to make it a lot easier. There's been a lot of talk about this on the uh, internet and websites however what has caused me a lot of trouble is this wretched cover here. Now I've spent about an hour trying to get this darn thing off because nobody mentioned, not the Haynes manual, not the Honda service manual, nobody online, that there are in fact a couple of almost invisible tabs on the front of the radiator, which you can't probably can't see uh, there, uh, and I didn't, f couldn't figure out they're almost invisible unless you really look closely. So that's caused me a lot of grief. It's always this simple thing that gives you problems, not uh, the 
uh, excuse me, I've run out of puff, not the uh, apparently difficult things. The throttle body, let's just go and have a look at it over here, oh, it's on the bench. Um, this is uh, not too bad. Uh, surprisingly the throttle uh, cables were nice and easy to release, uh, except one of the screws of course, the mounting screws was at an inaccessible angle. Uh, and this is the part that I was talking about that I'm going to investigate more, the throttle position sensor. So I can now get to and clean those pins which aren't showing up at all of course. So, as we continue on. Okay, so we're now outside and I've given the uh, all the connectors the same treatment I gave to the ECU connectors and with the um, uh, carburetor brush and then followed up with a blasting it out with the airline and the very lightest of smears of uh, AC50 uh, just to prevent any further corrosion but not to gum everything up. Uh, interestingly, um, I've not got an airline, so this is a, I'm using this as an alternative. Got an old car tyre, which I've pumped up to 50 psi, and it works uh, rather well. It means uh, saves me having to invest in an airline. Uh, there you go. Right, here we are again. Um, I've decided to backtrack a little bit because there's one or two things uh, I sort of skipped over and are possibly worth a mention because uh, they could be helpful. Uh, first of all is the removal of the sparking plug on the right hand side, uh, which I'm not even going to attempt to look at because it's more or less invisible. I found a stubby ratchet with a 14mm uh, deep socket was ideal for slackening it off uh, and then I could use a, an extension bar to get the spark plug out. Right, you'll see that I've now got the cam box cover back off again because I mentioned briefly in passing my tool for um, holding the uh, tappets in, in place while I was adjusting them. Uh, and all it is is a piece of metal with a, uh, a thick piece of metal filed to allow it to fit ooh, I've gone up frame, exactly on the uh, adjustment peg and to hold it firm while you use a ring spanner to lock it down tight. Um, you can torque down these as well once done. Um, I believe it's 23 newton meters, but uh, as I said, I think before the Haynes manual doesn't mention this for some reason. Okay, uh, right, what else have we got? I'm going to put the camera on a tripod so I can, if you bear with me, two seconds. What I wanted to demonstrate now was uh, basically that. Um, it's very easy, the cam box cover is very easy to get off, certainly the rear one, no problem at all. Um, get the orientation correct. I'm working up to the camera's showing me upside down. Um, and it pops on with just, and it's just held in place by two bolts. The thing really to watch is this. Let's get it in frame. Oh, sorry. This is an oil way dowel and can drop out and as in the previous section, this was the one I mentioned was fouling under the um, uh, right hand screw, which is part of oh I'm out of frame this assembly here, which apparently is a reed valve, so something to do with the uh, air recirculation. So when you're putting the valve cover back on, for goodness sake, make sure this doesn't drop out down. Worst possible scenario, you could drop it down the cam chain tunnel and that would be a disaster. So make sure the gasket is down firmly and just hold it in place and just drop it back on. Ooh, the Allen key's falling out. Okay, and it should just drop into place nicely, which is not going to. It's going to be fouled by a bit of plastic. There we go. Pan on, and we just torque it down. Easy peasy. Right. So that's, I won't talk that down now, it's not very exciting watching somebody doing up nuts and bolts. The next thing I wanted to move on to was the uh, uh, throttle body assembly. And, uh, as I said, um, it's actually very easy to get off and you can even take it off with everything still connected. 
I don't know if you can see, I've still got the cables uh, connected. And what I have done, I have changed the um, clamp bolts to Allen keys so I can use a ball end Allen key on it to tighten them up. So, and I've reversed the orientation of the right hand one because it pointed against the bodywork, but now you can get in it from this angle, just come in from the other side. Much, much easier. And as I say, um, oh yes, and I wanted to mention, let's put something to pad it a moment, the throttle uh, position sensor. Come around to the camera a minute. So I can see what I'm talking about. Just bear with me, I'll just unclip you. There we go. Right, the throttle posi position sensor which started this little uh, service uh, expedition on is this here. You can see that the adjustment or calibration and it adds better is achieved by these slotted holes. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt moving those until I'm absolutely convinced that it really is faulty, which I don't believe it is. However, if you did have to take it off, uh, I guess you could calibrate it with the throttle body removed, so long as all the electrics are plugged in and the throttle cable is still connected. Because uh, when the throttle body is in position, access for adjustment on this is very limited. Uh, so yeah, so I think that's covered all the points I wanted to reiterate at this point. Right, pause, take a pause. Okay, so that's the side track of the valve clearances done. The bike's only done 9,000 miles and not surprisingly uh, there was very little adjustment required, just one slight loosening off of one of the uh, tappets on the rear cylinder. Uh, luckily I had no adjustment needing to be done on the front. Um, to help me adjust the rear uh, tappet, oops, bring it here, I made myself a little tool just to hold the um, tappet in place while I tightened up the lock nut. Um, interestingly the Haynes manual doesn't specify the lock nut torque settings, it seems to have just got missed out. So I had to go online and look it up from the proper workshop manual and it is 23 uh, newton meters. Um, the only problem I had with the front uh, cylinder head, sorry, valve cover was um, lifting it up to clear it. Now, I don't know if you can see but there's a small bolt on the air breather hose and the far right hand one just nicely fouls the um, thermostat housing so you can't lift it up because that is directly above uh, one of the oil way um, oh, what do you call it uh, little collets or tubes that links it so you have to lift it up it's harder even to get it back in so that's a nice little design flaw yet again uh, so right or just now to put it all back together again Okay, so that's now torqued down. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention was don't forget to check these uh, vacuum lines for any leaks uh, when you reassemble it and make sure they're clear of any flat surfaces so you don't pinch them when you put the airbox back on again. Um, <clears throat> should you need to disconnect the um, throttle cables, it's just those two crosshead screws and these cables actually unhook from the uh, wheel quite easily. I um, don't know if we can, just, while we're at it, get a quick look at the back um, Allen key location now, which is, no you can't, just cables in the way. There we go, it's just there. Um, if you unhook the wire from this clip there, it makes access to that Allen key quite easy actually. Um, <coughs> okay, I've also done <coughs> a coolant change and come across another splendid bit of, bit of Mr. Honda's terrible design. Um, <coughs> the fairing is like so. Can I see like that? So I just decided it's not visible from inside or outside so I've just cut it back so that you can actually displace the panel, move it up slightly so you can actually get in to undo the radiator gap. How stupid is that? And when I've finished with it I've just 
bolted a metal plate so I can screw it back into position so nothing rattles when I'm done. In fact the hardest thing of the um, <coughs> coolant change excuse me, um, was refilling the, ra uh, refilling the radiator because it's just even like this it's still a swine to get it off and a swine to pull stuff in easily. There you go. So she's all back together again uh, no problems really as you can see the weather's changed quite a bit but I've been out, done a couple of short test runs, and all seems well. Thank you for watching. I hope you found anything, uh, might have found something useful in this little, uh, little video of uh, my investigations. And I will keep the uh, um, uh, links on this updated. Should the problem return, I shall go back and do some more investigations and maybe even end up replacing the throttle position sensor in the end. But so far, so good. I'm tentatively saying problem solved. Thank you for watching.